Today I got a brand new Acer desktop computer. I just took it out of the box. It was shipped with Windows 10 Home Edition. I'm going to show you how to do a fresh clean install of the new Windows 11 Home Edition and how to switch it into a local account. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Uh, today I got a short little video I want to do for you. Um, I got a brand new Acer desktop computer. It's an Acer Aspire um, desktop with a Ryzen 3 processor in it. It's brand new, just took it out of the box. It's not really for anybody special. Um, I just want to show you how to do a fresh clean install of the new Windows 11 Home Edition onto it. Even though it shipped with Windows 10, I'm not even going to turn it on and even mess around with Windows 10. Um, I just want to do a clean install. The exact model of this unit is a, it's an Aspire TC-390-UA91. It's got a quad-core Ryzen 3 processor in it, the 3200U. Comes with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. It's got a 512 gigabyte NVMe drive in it. It does have room inside. You can actually add two three and a half inch mechanical hard drives. It's got got room in there for it. Uh, in the back here, you can see it's nothing real special. Um, has plenty of USB. It's got 3.0, 3.1 regular USB, HDMI, and a VGA port. Of course, it has dual band Wi-Fi. It's got an optical drive. Standard Acer desktop. Uh, does have the card reader in front as well. So, like I said, it is a Ryzen 3. It easily meets the minimum system requirements for Windows 11, but. Um, the biggest complaint I'm hearing already from my customers with Windows 11 Home Edition is that you have to have a Microsoft account. Now during the initial setup process, we do have to have internet connection and you do have to set up a Microsoft account. Um, it's very simple, but once you get, as soon as you get into Windows, you can easily switch it back over a, a local account so you don't have to sign in every time. You will lose a little functionality, mainly the widgets won't work unless you're signed in to your Microsoft account, but that's really about it. Um, there are some apps in the store that you'll, you'll need to be signed in to either get or to use in the Microsoft store. So basically, what I'm gonna do, guys, is I made a, I used the Windows 11 media creation tool, just put it on a flash drive. Um, I'll have a link down below where you can download what you need to make one of these. You gotta have an eight gigabyte flash drive or larger. So I'm just gonna basically stick it in the USB port right up front here. Hook up all my gizmos to it. I'm gonna use ethernet. Gotta have internet to set up Windows 11. Whether it's an upgrade or a clean install. I'm gonna use HDMI, my power cord, and my USB adapter here for my old fashioned PS2 keyboard mouse, yay. So I'm going to simply turn it on and start tapping my F12 key on my keyboard to get to the boot menu. Loading boot menu. And there is my Kingston flash drive. Choose it, hit enter. We're going to boot off the flash drive now, obviously. And I'm just going to delete all the partitions on the SSD and just do a clean install. I like clean installs whenever possible. It's just cleaner, no bloatware, whatever you want to call it. So um, for me, I'm going to choose United States English. I'm going to hit install now. You want to leave your flash drive in there until it reboots after copying the files over. After that, you can pop it out of there. You don't need it no more. Said so you got to have an internet connection to get it set up. License agreement. I'm going to do custom because I want to get rid of all these partitions. Like I said, it came out of the box with Windows 10. No sense in going into Windows 10 and then upgrading it. You might as well just do a clean install. Just deleting all these partitions. So there's our SSD. I'm going to hit next and let it copy the files over. It shouldn't take too long. It takes about the same amount of time to set up Windows 11 as it does Windows 10, basically. So I'm going to let this go, guys. I'll be back in a few. I'm 
All right, guys, I just finished copying over all the files. We can take out our Windows 11 flash drive. Sorry if you can hear my the squeaky noise. I'm trying not to move too much. The backrest of my wheelchair is getting old and it squeaks when I'm squirming around in my chair. Notice this microphone picks it up once in a while. So I apologize for that. So I'm just going to walk you through the quick setup here, get into Windows 11, and show you how you can switch it back to a local account if you want. You just delete your Microsoft account out, out, right out of the Windows 11 altogether if you prefer. But remember, if you want to use some apps or use the widgets in Windows 11, you do have to be signed in. But Windows 11 installs basically the same way as Windows 10. It's just like Windows 10 with a little fresh coat of paint. And everything's kind of just laid out a little bit different. Not a big fan of Windows 11 just yet. Windows 10 is going to be around until 2025, so no, no worries there. Um, but eventually, yeah. But who knows where we're going to be at in four years. A couple of reboots here. <laughs> Stupid squeak. Like an old rocking chair. Yay. All right. All right, so I'm going to choose United States here as your country or region. And U.S. keyboard layout, I'm going to skip additional layouts. Again, these are basically the same things they ask you in Windows 10. And then we do have an internet connection, so it does check for updates. This takes a short amount of time. If you don't have a reason to upgrade to Windows 11, don't upgrade right now. If you have a reason, like you just like to always have the newest, latest OS on your computer, then go for it. A little bit of a learning curve on it for you, going from Windows 10 to Windows 11, finding the things you want, but overall it's not bad. They have added a couple little extra features I kind of like. Like, for example, the lock screen. Everybody hated the lock screen on Windows 10. Now you can just turn that thing off, finally. They got just a little button you can click where you can disable the lock screen. All right, so you can name your PC here. I'm going to skip this. I'll show you in settings where you can add that later, right? Because if you name it, then you hit next, then it has to do another restart. It takes a minute, then it picks up where it left off. So I'm just going to hit skip for now. That's just if you have a network or something like that and you need to name it like, you know, Desktop 1 or Bob's Desktop or whatever. So here's where we don't have any options because this is Windows, 10, or sorry, Windows 11 Home. We have to set up the login with a Microsoft account. Now, if you already got a Microsoft account, like a Hotmail or an Outlook.com account, just sign in. It's that simple. Um, or you can, um, if you go to sign in options here, you can sign in, um, actually, sorry, wrong one. You can use, you hit create one here and you can use your Gmail account or whatever you want. Then they'll, Microsoft will send you a security code to verify, blah, 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 and get you in. But for this, I'm just going to use one of my many Microsoft accounts I got. If I can remember, oops, doing the video driver. My bad. That was a video driver. No biggie. Um, what was that? I got so many of these, I can't, I think this one will work. Yeah.com. I think that's right. And hit next. I guess it's right. It's going to verify. And they force you to create a PIN. You can't bypass this. You have to set up a PIN number. So when you sign in with your Microsoft account, it'll use the PIN number. Uh, if you forget your PIN, you can recover it using your email address like the one I just typed in. So I'll hit create pen. You can include letters and symbols if you want, but in this case I'm just going to use a simple little four-digit pin number here. 
hit OK or hit Enter. Um, you, they want to know if you want to restore from a user account or set up a new device. Um, you can just, I'm going to choose right here, set up as a new device. And these are all the same things that, you know, I'm just going to, I'll leave location on. I'm going to turn all this other stuff off. You can enable this stuff later in settings, no problem. Just like on Windows 10. It's just, it's just laid out different, as you can see. Hit accept. And here, if you want, uh, this is kind of silly, you can choose, what are you going to do, you know, with your computer, mostly entertainment or a little bit of gaming. You can check these boxes, and all that really does is load apps onto your new start menu that you might be interested in based on your selections here. But again, you can change this stuff later. Right now, I'm just going to hit skip. It's, it's, you're not missing anything by not checking those boxes. Um, I'm not going to back up any of my files right now because I don't have any files. So I hit next. And that's just, you know, Microsoft wanting to get you to use their OneDrive. Here they're trying to get you to sign up or, you know, try Office or Microsoft 365, basically Office. I'm going to hit no thanks. Again, you can get to all this stuff later through settings. I'm going to check for updates again. And as you can see, the, uh, the computer easily met the minimum system requirements, the 8th gen or newer CPU, TPM 2.0, UP BIOS, Secure Boot, all that fun stuff. If you don't have any of those things, you can't use Windows 11. Unless you want to try one of those hacks that you, you, you find all over on YouTube or whatever, where you can cheat. But those are going to have issues, you know, like when a new feature update comes out or something like that, you're going to have to do all those things all over again with your Windows 11. Probably won't get all the updates. Microsoft says, you know, well, you can do that. In fact, Microsoft even released a registry tweak or hack that you can do if you want to upgrade to Windows 11 from Windows 10. But they said, you do this at your own risk. You probably won't get all the updates, this, that, and the other. And I just don't recommend doing those, you know, if it's a main computer that you use all the time, got important stuff on it, I just don't, wouldn't recommend that. Just do it this way or, a, you know, a, a, an upgrade with supported hardware. This doesn't take too long here, but now we, we do have a Microsoft account set up. As soon as Windows pops up here, pops up. Yay, Windows 11. All right, so all we're going to do, uh, you want to go to settings. You can go to the new start button down here. You can right click. You can go to settings. You can do the Windows key plus I. That'll bring up that. Or you just click on the start menu and settings is right here by default in Windows 11. So we'll move this over here. Um, but here's these other things right here. Like we opted out of OneDrive, Microsoft 365 up at the top here if you choose to try those out for free. Uh, so we're at system. If we scroll down to the bottom of system and go to about down here on the bottom, right here under advanced system settings, if you click that, right here is where you can add, go up here and click on computer name, you can add a name to your computer. And after you do that, you will have to reboot. But we don't care about that right now. So I'll go back to system. I'm gonna go to accounts right down here. And I'm going to go to your info at the top. You can see we haven't verified it yet. That's no big deal. That's if you're using it, your account across multiple devices. Uh, right here, I can click right here where it says Microsoft account. Sign in with the local account instead. But let me go back. I'm going to go over here to the second one, email and accounts. Click on that. Here's the email we, we logged in with, the Microsoft account that I already had. See, if I click on it, the only option we have now is to manage it, which I don't want to do. If you want to remove it, you have to go back here to your info first, switch it to a local account. And that's some guy I don't even know, <laughs> sort of. Hit next, put in your current password that you use to, you know, during the setup, and hit OK. And you can change the username to whatever you want. I'll just leave it the way it is. I'll leave all this blank for a password because you don't want a password. Just hit next, hit sign out and finish. 
and there's the lock screen hit sign in you see there's no password required so when now when you turn on and boot up the computer you won't have to sign in but like I said if we go down here to the bottom and click on oop, click on the widgets here oh wait I didn't I'm sorry I didn't I didn't remove it yet that's still gonna work because I saw the Microsoft account I just changed it to a local account still learning Windows 11 guys I'm still calling it Windows 10 uh, let's go back to settings go back here to accounts and I'll go to email and accounts and here's our even though we are a local account here's the Microsoft account still in here and if I hit remove I'm gonna hit yes now it's gone now if I open up now we don't have a Microsoft account set up if I open up my widgets you can see here it says sign in to use your widgets I do have an internet connection of course but if you decide you know change your mind or whatever you can easily go back and, and put your Microsoft account back in here or a different Microsoft account just by going to accounts and add an account right here add a Microsoft account you can make out like I said make up a new one right from scratch uh, they even let you do it with a phone number I believe as well you know to your smartphone I don't really recommend that but um, yeah that's all you got to do and yeah, there are some cool things with Windows 10 you can move the um, if we go into settings here for example I don't want to get lost in the weeds here and we go to uh, personalization here here's the lock screen where you can control you have a little more control over that now um, which is kind of nice so you can uh, up here where it says lock screen status right here right now it says calendar you can just hit none which is an option you didn't have before um, so yeah if you got Windows 11 or thinking about getting it there are some cool little features they added in here so you got a little bit more control over the way it looks and behaves so overall that's all you got to do to do a clean install of Windows 11 and as you it, it did activate uh, no problem there because it had Windows 10 on it, already had a digital license, so you don't need a product key. That's not required anymore. So I hope the video was helpful. Um, you can use Windows 11 without a Microsoft account. You can use it, you know, with a local account, and you just won't have access to like the widgets and some other apps out of the Microsoft Store, and like your OneDrive and stuff like that. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful, guys. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.